All right, guys, how's it going? Today, AMD is launching their biggest software release ever, their Radeon software Crimson Relive Edition. Now, I was invited to a presentation last week, and I can assure you that this certainly is AMD's biggest software release ever. This release is jam-packed with some very interesting new software tools, which I will, of course, be taking a very close look at. For this video, though, I'm simply going to go over the bigger news in the release. Now, Crimson Relive is, of course, based on last year's big release, Crimson, which arrived around the same time, around Christmas time in 2015. Since that point, there have been 29 total driver releases, 8 of which went through Microsoft's official quality testing, more than 28 games supported and optimised, and over 85 million downloads of the software from AMD.com. That is a lot of downloads. Now, very early on the presentation, AMD pointed out that up until this point, their Crimson software had a very high user satisfaction rating, 4.5 out of 5, with the very most recent data at 4.4 out of 5. We've all heard the stories about AMD drivers, of course, and they are, of course, keen to show that any previous issues are well in the past. This is a very high number. I'm not sure I would give them 4.5 out of 5, but that's a video for a later date. Next up, more gamers play on Radeon graphics than Intel and Nvidia combined. Now, this is a very interesting slide. And it was a couple of weeks ago where John Petty Research, in an AMD-sponsored report, basically showed that AMD hardware powers a lot of gaming. Now, this is something that you probably already knew, because AMD is, of course, in the major consoles. I've had a closer look at the numbers, and while they weren't completely accurate, they're not that far off, and AMD probably does just about power more gamers than Intel and Nvidia combined, certainly more than Nvidia by themselves do. And it is, of course, the console effect. I'll leave a link to the report in the description below. You can have a look at it yourself. Now, AMD talks about DX12 quite a lot, and they're doing very well in this API. DirectX 12 is the fastest growing API ever, with 15 titles available right now, and expected to be over 50 DX12 titles in 2017. DX12 and Vulkan are the future of APIs. Now, one of the bigger news stories is the Radeon Pro software is now also part of the Crimson Relive Edition. So not just the gaming stuff, also the pro stuff. The pro drivers are included in this release. Now, a large part of the presentation was dealing with GPU open and open source development. There are now 70 SDKs, samples, libraries, and tools available through GPU open. And this looks set to be a real success for AMD. The whole point of this is simple. It's about selling hardware. AMD is a hardware company. And by basically giving away software for free, that is how they sell their hardware. Most of the stuff that NVIDIA does is, of course, proprietary. GPU Open is now a massive topic. I will, however, touch on one or two of these new tools in future videos. Now, one of the tools I will be talking about later is OCAT, the Open Capture and Analysis tool. In a nutshell, this is simply about recording frame rates and frame times in certain games. It's got a nice overlay, and you can see how the frame rate is going while gaming. It works in DX12 and in Vulkan, and this is the major selling point. Not that you have to buy it, of course, because it's free on GPU Open. More on this one later, though. Dress FX 4.0? Haven't seen a lot about this, but I would assume that it just runs better, i.e. much lower overhead, and would simply be a natural evolution of this software. We can see here, high fidelity hair interaction. We can expect to see more of this in games coming soon. The Advanced Media Framework 1.4, AMF, is AMD's replacement for AMD App, which is basically their framework for using their video coding engine. That's just stuff like Shadowplay. And once again, at a later point, we'll take a look at this. Now, there's a lot of talk in VR. AMD is doing an awful lot in VR behind the scenes. You've probably heard about Liquid VR before and Affinity Multi-GPU. I believe the first game with a really good working multi-GPU for VR is Serious Sam VR. Interestingly though, Liquid VR now has multi-view and multi-res rendering. Multi-view looks an awful lot like Nvidia's Pascal series multi-projection. Rather than completely redrawing the scene with only minor differences, a lot of the geometry can be reused in both eyes. Multi-res shading is simply making the viewport act a bit more like your eyes, where the image is sharper around the center and blurrier around the edges. This, of course, has the advantage of having lower rendering overhead, as the lower pixel densities around the edges require less processing power. So this is all stuff that is coming in the very near future to VR. Now, as I mentioned at the start, the new Radeon Pro software is also included in the package. 
and it took up a large part of the presentation. To be honest, this isn't really my arena, but it's pretty interesting stuff for any of you guys that are using your GPUs for stuff other than gaming. All this pro stuff is mostly for guys that are working in video, 3D modeling, that kind of thing. The entire presentation may well be made available by the time you watch this. So if you're interested in the pro stuff, by all means check it out. There were some pretty interesting stories about how this was all being integrated into the game engines however. And of course, Liquid VR support is now available. Content creation while in VR is almost certainly going to be the future of content creation. And AMD has put a lot of effort into this. Now there's a bit of love for Linux as well. So you Linux guys, be sure to check that one out. And finally, a bunch of benchmarks showing the improvement through drivers using the Radeon Pro graphics cards. Some pretty big looking improvements there. Somebody else would need to verify that. Now, moving on to the stuff that we are really interested in. And AMD showed a list of the top issues that have been resolved over the year. You maybe recognize one or two of these. I was certainly experiencing this crash using Wattman. The last month or so, I started getting these random crashes in Firefox, but that also appears to have been resolved. And this really ancient bug, the intermittent mouse cursor corruption bug, has finally been fixed for the RX480. Those were the big ones for me, but apparently they've all been fixed. We shall see. Now again, AMD went to great pains to point out that they really have been improving their drivers, basically through better quality testing. But one of the things they didn't touch on a great deal was the performance gains since the launch of the RX 480. But they showed one or two with some pretty decent gains, it has to be said, between 4 and 8%. Now this is since the launch of the RX 480, which was only 5 or 6 months ago. Now what AMD said was, much more effort had gone into day 1 drivers, and that is why the games are improving less over over time. One of the main criticisms of AMD's driver department was that they wasted time optimizing really old games. Sometimes you would see a game that was two years old being optimized in a new driver and people were going mad about that saying why are you optimizing these really old games when you should be optimizing the newest games. So this has all changed now and far more emphasis has been put on the day one driver. But as you can see, the gains are still to be found, which isn't all that surprising as it is of course a new architecture and that is when driver gains are more likely to be found. I'm pretty sure some other members of the press will verify these numbers or not. There was another interesting anecdote around a new feature which can detect if you're using a bad HDMI cable. The story went that Raja, who is of course the head of the Radeon Technology Group, had taken a faulty HDMI cable from work back home. Apparently a bunch of engineers got on it to see what was wrong and it turned out that they figured out it was the cable. You can learn more about this if you watch the entire presentation. Right, we're warming up now and getting on to the really interesting stuff. Finally, FreeSync technology now works in borderless full screen mode and effectively removes the very last thing that G-Sync had over FreeSync. There was a very interesting slide right afterwards though, showing how the borderless full screen mode had up to 24% lower latency, or what they are calling their click to response time. I'm not entirely sure if this only works in borderless full screen mode, or if this covers free sync period. And I'm not even going to attempt to figure out what's going on in this slide. Now to continue with free sync, AMD also added a new gradual refresh ramp. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will have a closer look at it. Moving on to the coolest new software feature, Radeon Chill. What it basically does is it saves power while gaming, and for me it certainly is the coolest feature of the software. Very, very interesting indeed. When Chill is switched on, the driver can dynamically decrease and increase the frame rate, depending on what you are doing on screen, and also with the mouse. I don't want to give too much away here, but it is very, very cool indeed. You're just going to have to watch the video to see for yourself. Another very interesting point, Wattman is now available for most of the AMD cards released in the past couple of years. That is the Fury series and some of the 300 and 200 series graphics cards. Maybe not a great surprise, but really nice to see all the same. Moving on, there's a new installer, which I will take a look at in the Radeon Chill video. Yet more love for Linux, because FreeSync is now available on Linux, as well as expanded support to all AMD D GPU GCN products. That's every graphics card of around the last five years, so there's some pretty long overdue improvements right there. And last but not least, the star of the show is Radeon Relive. Now obviously I get a lot of comments on the channel, on a daily basis, and the number of times I have seen people say, I would like to switch to AMD, but they don't have anything as good as Shadowplay. I gave up responding to that one, I was getting it so often. 
there has of course been similar software to Shadowplay. For example, AMD had the Gaming Evolved client years ago, which morphed into Raptor, but was basically the same program. And even now you could use something like Plays TV, which is almost identical to Shadowplay. But for whatever reason, people didn't seem to care. They just kept on talking about Shadowplay. So finally, Capture, Customize and Share. Relive is AMD's own Shadowplay software. They're saying it is lightweight with minimal impact. Only a 3% performance impact in World of Warcraft. And in Overwatch and Battlefield 1 is only 4%. These numbers are really quite good. I will of course be taking a closer look in a very near future video. It's got most of the stuff Shadowplay has, for example the instant replay up to one hour and one click recording, streaming and screenshots. You can set up your own custom overlays and of course set up and reposition your webcam. And AMD were very keen to point out that it is of course free with no registration required. Now Shadowplay has been making some noises for the wrong reasons recently and it's all been based on this registration. But again, that's coming in the main video. Interestingly, Radeon Pro Relive allows you to record your professional workflows as well. So like I said at the start, this has been a huge software release, not just for gamers, but also for developers and professionals, and clearly far more than just a simple driver release. We've seen Radeon Chill, Radeon Relive, FreeSync, Display Connectivity, User Feedback and Linux drivers for consumers, Affinity Multi-GPU, we didn't talk about Radeon Loom, OCAT I'll do a video on, the Media Framework 1.4 and Multi-View and Multi-Res rendering, and of course Depth of Field for developers, and Professional Saw Liquid VR, Radeon Pro Relive, and a bunch of other stuff that I didn't even cover. The whole point of this is that, obviously coming up to Christmas, AMD wants to cover absolutely everything in the graphics space, and one surefire way to get coverage is releasing something of this magnitude. But that was just a quick and dirty overview. And AMD's estimates say that one minute of video is equal to 1.8 million words when it comes to customer communication. That's probably why I get invited to these things. If you've got any questions on any of this stuff, feel free to ask in the comments below. And I'll catch you later, guys.